Hi hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I wanted to put together this video for m my pre-calculus class from section 9.2, Arithmetic Sequences. Uh, so first thing we want to talk about, we see a sequence of numbers. To determine if a sequence is arithmetic or not, it has to have a common difference. So meaning that there has to be the same difference between each set of numbers all the way through. There's got to be a pattern that has a common difference. So how do you get from 7 to 11? Well, you got to add 4. How do you get from 11 to 15? Well, you got to add 4. How do you get from 15 to 19? You got to add 4. So your common difference here for this one is 4. How do you get from 2 to negative 3? Well, that's kind of figuring out here. All right, so if you actually do some side work, negative 3 minus 2, that's going to be a negative 5. So if we subtract 5, we can see that 2 minus 5, negative 3, negative 3 minus 5, negative 8, negative 8 minus 5, we got negative 13. So our common difference here winds up being a negative 5. We look at this one, we got fractions. We got 1, and then it jumps to 5 fourths, 3 halves, 7 fourths. So kind of looking at that right there, well, how about we change the 1 to just 1 over 1? How are you going to get from 1 over 1 to 5 fourths? Uh, let's think about this. Uh, how, well, let's try with 5 fourths minus 4 fourths, because that's 1 and you get 1 fourth. Is that the same as taking 3 halves minus 5 fourths? Well, let's check. We've got to change that to uh, 6 fourths minus 5 fourths. So it looks like our common difference here is 1 fourth. Now we should check that last one. 7 fourths minus 3 halves, which again is 7 fourths minus 6 fourths. Yeah, we get a fourth. So our common difference for this one, for this sequence of numbers, is one fourth. That's our common difference. So that's the kind of common theme we got to look for for an arithmetic sequence to have is that there's a common difference between the sets of numbers. So when we get into the nuts and bolts of an arithmetic sequence, one of the things we want to talk about here at the beginning is the formulas that go with it. The nth term. Now, when I say the nth term, that could be the fifth term, the tenth term, the twentieth term, or the thousandth term. This nth term has to be right here. This is what we know is, is some kind of formula that pretty much is the rule for all of the numbers. And the nth term right here, a sub n, is dn plus c. And the c value is the first term. So a sub 1, that's your first term. And d is what we were figuring out before. That's your difference. That's what you got to use. So these formulas right here, this dn plus c and c equaling a sub 1 minus d, those are key for figuring out uh, your nth term or your formula for the arithmetic sequence. So let's actually look at a problem here. Example 1. Find a formula for the nth term whose common difference is 3 and whose first term is 2. So first thing I want to do, again, though, I want to write down, I know that the nth term is dn plus c, where c is equal to that first term minus the common difference. So this c value right here, i got to do this first. got to figure this out. Okay, so I know that C is always the first term. Now, did they tell us what the first term? They sure did. There's A sub 1 right there. 2 minus the difference. And there's D. So 2 minus 3, that's negative 1. So that's going to go right here. So I know that A sub N is DN minus 1. But we also know what the common difference is, and that was 3. So I know then that my formula, the nth term, is 3n minus 1. This formula represents what that statement held at the beginning. Find a formula for the nth term. We just did that. Common difference is 3. 
first term is 2. Now see, if I wanted to, I can figure out all the terms. A sub 1 tells me that I just plug 1 into this formula. So I got 3 times 1 minus 1. Well, what's 3 minus 1? That's 2. I already knew that the first term was 2, so that matches. That's good. If I want the second term, I plug in 2. So 3 times 2 minus 1. That's 6 minus 1. I get 5. If I want the third term, I plug in 3. And so I can see that I got 9 minus 1. 3 times 3, 9 minus 1. That's 8. I knew the common difference right here was 3. So let's just double check. How do you get from 2 to 5? Got to add 3. How do you get from 5 to 8? Got to add 3. And the great thing about this formula right here is I can figure out any term that I want for this. So if I wanted to find the 50th term, I would just take 3 times 50 and subtract 1, which is 150 minus 1. And I know that the 50th term is 149. So that's a, the simplest example to start with, where they actually just give you the difference, they give you the first term, find the formula. Let's keep going here. Example two, find the nth term of the formula, given that the fourth term of the sequence is 20, and the 13th term is 65. Now, there's a bunch of information here, and we're not given the difference or the first term, but I'm still going to write those formulas down because they're pretty important. Okay, so I know that a sub n is dn plus c, and c is the first term minus the difference. All right, but what do I know? I know that the fourth term is 20. So that means the fourth term, a sub 4, the value of n is 4. So that's d times 4 plus C. That's got to equal 20. All right, so I'm going to kind of clean that up a little bit. We normally don't write numbers after the variable. So I know then that just looking at this part right here, that 4D plus C is equal to 20. All right, so that's the first part of the information that I know. What's the second part of the information? Oh, I know the 13th term is 65. So I'm going to actually kind of do the same thing here. I know that the 13th term, where I've got D times 13. And again, what I'm doing here is I'm plugging in 13 where there's an N okay, for the DN plus C. That's how I know to plug that stuff in there. And I know that the 13th term of DN plus C is equal to 65. So again, if I just clean up this part right here, I've got 13D plus C is equal to 65. All right, so now look what I have here. I've got two equations with two of the same variables. So I'm sure at one point, and I know that for us in our pre-cal class, a chapter before, we reviewed systems of equations. So I can write 4D plus C is equal to 20, and 13D plus C is equal to 65. I can solve this with the elimination method, the substitution method. I could graph it. I could use a matrix, however you want to solve this. So there's many different ways you can solve this, but for right now, I'm just going to kind of skip that step because this all depends on what your preference is. But when you solve this system, okay, you got a system of equations here. And again, elimination method, substitution method, matrix, however you want to do this, you're going to see that D actually winds up being 5 and C winds up being 0 when you solve it, okay? Now, if I take the D and the C and I plug it back into the original equation for the nth term, that means now I know what my formula is, okay? I know that my nth term formula, A sub N, is equal to, okay, D went in there, so for your difference, so I got 5 
n plus c, which was 0. Plus, and I'm not going to write plus 0 because it's just, I know that the formula right here is 5n. And now that I know the formula, I can figure out any term that I wanted to. Okay, the fourth term was 20, so let's make sure that works. 5 times 4, yeah, that's 20. That worked out. And the 13th term is 65. I plug 13, 5 times 13, we get 65. So this is all we wanted to find here because the directions would just find the nth term. Okay, so we actually had to set this up with the formula and then just use a system of equations to solve. All right, so that was example two. Let's take a look at example three. We've got the tenth term equaling negative 34. The fifteenth term equaling, or excuse me, the tenth term negative 34. Fifteenth term, we've got negative 54. So again, find the, now we're going to do what we did last one, but now they're expanded. Find the fourth term when you're done. So we have to find the nth term and then plug in 4. So I'm going to do this the same way. I know that the tenth term, a sub 10, is d times 10 plus c is equal to negative 34. And again, I'm going to write up here, a sub n is dn plus c. And that n, that's your n right there. And I also know that the 15th term is d times 15 plus c equals negative 54. So I'm going to set this up as my systems of equation right here. So my system of equations, and again, you can use whatever you want. Matrix on your calculator, uh, substitution method, elimination method, wh whatever. I'm going to have 10D plus C equals negative 34. 15D plus C equals negative 54. When you solve this, now, personally, I would think either matrix on a calculator or just multiplying this row by negative 1, and your C's would cancel out. You're going to see... Uh, when you solve this, D is going to equal negative 4, and C is going to equal 6. That means that your formula, your nth term formula, A sub N is DN plus C. So that's negative 4N plus 6. If you plug in 10, that's negative 40 plus 6. That's negative 34. So you know that that's correct. But now, we, they didn't just ask for the formula. They said, all right, what's the fourth term? So the fourth term is negative 4 times 4 plus 6. So finding the fourth term, that's going to be negative 16 plus 6. We know that that's going to be a negative 10. That is our fourth term. That's what they wanted right there. Okay, so hopefully this is getting a little bit more clear as we work through this. After you do that, part of the section is finding the sum of a finite arithmetic sequence. Finite is just a simple term that means that the, the uh, sequence of numbers stops. Okay, okay. when we have finite, I erased it, I got the uh, wrong part there. When we have a finite sequence, all right? A finite sequence just means it stops. We're going from 1 to 10. 1 to 10, you know, writing them out 1, 2, 3, 4, so on, until you get to 10. 10 is where it stops, okay? That's what a finite means. It, the sum of a finite equation is this formula right here, n over 2. So if this is I need 10 terms, you'd have 10 for n. This is your first term. This is your last term. So a lot of times you have to figure out what that last term is right here. It says find the sum of the numbers 1 through 19. Now, you can sit there and go, all right, I got a 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way, you know, to 19. However, there's a shorter way, and that's using this formula. If I've got 19 numbers that I'm adding up, okay, I've got 19 divided by 2, and I've got the first term, which was 1, and the last term, which is 19. And you can plug that straight into your calculator just as you see it. And you know that it's going to wind up being 20 times 19 over 2. 
And so, I mean, you could do that the long way is, you know, 19 over 2 times 20. 2 goes into 20 10 times. 10 times 19. There's your 190. You can also use the sigma notation, but I'm not doing that in this video. But you can use your sigma notation on your calculator because you're starting at 1 to 19 of just x. You're just adding up the numbers from 1 to 19 and you would get 190 as well. Here's another great one here is find the sum of the first hundred numbers. Alright so again I'm gonna write down or that formula that's up there right here. I'm gonna scroll over just a little bit and we know that we're gonna have a hundred numbers and that's a hundred divided by 2, and the first term is 1, and the last term is 100. So that's going to be 50 times 101, which is 5,050. That's adding up all the numbers from 1 to 100. Now, are they always that simple? No. They're telling us right now what the first and last terms are. A lot of the times what we have to do is what we did in the first three examples. We have to figure out what those terms are and then be able to plug them in. So let's take a look at our last example right here. Find the 150th partial sum of the arithmetic sequence. So if I start again with the formula, S of N is N divided by 2 of a sub 1 plus a sub n. Okay, Remember that what this represents here. Okay, This is our first term. This is our last term. So in this case, this is the 150th term that shows up in the problem. Okay, So we're going to have to figure out what that is. They give us the sequence here starting with 5, 16, 27, 38, and 49. So the very first thing i got to figure out, all right, what's the common difference? How do you get from 5 to 16? Looks like 11. How about 16 to 27? Looks like 11. 27 to 38? Still 11. That means our common difference is 11. And we know from what we did before, I got a sub n, dn plus c, C is the first term minus the difference. Now, what do we know about our first term? It's right there, 5. 5 minus 11, okay? So 5 minus 11, and we know that our C value is going to be negative 6. So our formula for the nth term, okay, common difference was, again, 11. 11 n minus 6. So there's our formula for the nth term. Excellent. So now what do we need to know? We need to know the 150th term. So what's our 150th term? Well, that's 11 times 150 minus 6. All right, so some calculator work here. And we're going to notice that the 150th term is 1,644. Just plugging that in your calculator. Now we know everything that we need to know. So if I'm going to add up the sum of 150 terms, I wrote that kind of big, so I'm going to re redo that. I know that the sum of 150 terms is going to be 150 divided by 2. The first term was 5. The last term was 1,644. I could plug this into my calculator just as you see it. And I know that adding all those terms up, 150 of them, is going to wind up being 123,675. So that one combined everything we learned out of that lesson and then adding them up with that formula. So hopefully this video helped out uh, of section 9.2 of my pre-calculus class, Arithmetic Sequences. Thanks for showing up, guys.